we ready for this? I don't know. It is a lie. Yeah, lies. Let's see if it'll actually well, it changed course. Yeah. Okay. If you would, hell, I don't know. Keep the pollen <laughs> off of us, something. Don't it here. Yeah. Deck brooms for the pollen. Yeah. Deck brooms for the pollen. <laughs> Got a mosquito out there snorting a line of pollen off the hood of my car. <laughs> All he's in one? A, yeah, he's in a sweater. <laughs> um, so if you like coffee, talk to these guys. King Harvest Coffee. Let them know you heard about it here. Also, remembering the coffee anthology submissions are now open. Send us coffee stories. If you like smart ass person, who doesn't? Um, <laughs> tinyurl.com among the leaves tees. Smart ass t shirts to your heart's content. And since it's starting to get warm enough to be t shirt weather yeah. now, I'm trying to trying to air out my shorts. And every time I get ready to put on shorts, not touching that. it's 55 <laughs> degrees, and I'm not wearing shorts at 55 degrees. I think Jim and I had the same thought there. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all ain't right. <laughs> you knew this. <laughs> Is any of us right? I know. And publishing if we were news, right, we would not be doing this. Right? In publishing news, uh, Kelly Grayson, <laughs> I'm going I'm to keep talking. <laughs> Kelly Grayson has a uh, new one coming out. I forget. There it is. Uh, Wombat Prime. Wombat Prime drops <laughs> April 19th. Um Look for Brian Nad in that. Yeah. Him are the star of that one. Yeah. So Wombat Brian Nad is apparently Wombat Prime. Yeah. So um and Nancy April made 19th. it as far as Santa Fe. I did the cover for Wombat Prime and the uh, cover brief was basically a uh, grizzled Wombat in combat gear yeah. with if his hindquarters were showing Appaloosa markings. <laughs> yeah. And since wombats are not usually spotted, I'm going to go with scarring and has grown back white. Yeah. I haven't read it yet. So yeah. he usually just sends me a, a really brief thing and, and do a cut, go do a cover. And I'm like, yeah. okay, have fun. Working with Kelly's easy. Yeah. And Joel mentions, and it's, it's a good one. Tuesday was 61 years ago that we lost the Thresher. Mm, Thresher's still on patrol. Yep, still on patrol, along with a scorpion. Jesse, how'd you get beat up in a Waffle House? Because that was what... <laughs> oh, in the story. Oh, yeah. in the story. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought he'd just gotten his butt whooped in a Waffle House. because I mean, <laughs> It's Waffle House, wouldn't... Yeah. could go either way. It could go either way. <laughs> Assassin the waitress caught a pair of brass knuckles in the teeth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Kelly's been on a roll lately. Uh, the last Waffle House we were in, the waitress had such large fake eyelashes. Yeah. It was like she was wearing a pair of black moths. <laughs> Waffle I'm, House. I mean, she was this little tiny skinny thing, real soft spoken. Evidently new to her job, yeah. but she had like these moth wings on her upper <laughs> lids, and it was like I was fascinated. Like a flying nut, a good stiff breeze, and she'd be gone. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the video of a woman with gigantic lashes on a roller coaster? Yeah. Oh, no. And they're no. Like her, and she's like flipping her head around <laughs> her, her lashes are going every which way. It's hilarious. It's absolutely hilarious. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so last night I did a rising tide interview with the boys from uh Jumpmaster Press. That should be up at the end of the month. Um, good interview. Uh one of the better ones we've done so far. So Excellent. if you've got nothing better to do, uh when the podcast drops, y'all might want to listen in on that one. There's some there's good crunchy stuff in there. I'm I am sad that I wasn't feeling like I wanted to stick around in peanut gallery that one. Did you just plug your pin into your tablet? Yes. All right. I'm charging it up a little bit. It's... I have digital tools. This is what I do. <laughs> digital tools require power. <clears throat> Not going there. <laughs> this from the artiste over here who is uh, dressed nicely, including the combat boots today. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> She's dressed very professionally with a sport coat and a nice blouse and a skirt and combat boots. 
Yeah, yeah. Like, and she came here. I don't know what she's expecting. <laughs> yeah. I have errands to run after the blanket fort. <laughs> errands. What you see is what yeah. you get. Yeah. And sometimes a girl just likes to dress up. Yeah. With great stompy combat boots. <laughs> yeah. Well, as she said, they are the female style because they, they have, have the flowers on the inside. Flowers on the they're, inside. They're laced up with green ribbons. <laughs> yeah. Uh, artists. You can't live with them and you never mind. I, I, li I live with Rita. I mean, that's. Y'all know Rita's flair. Rita Fox, because it's got the pink sparkly ears. Rita Fox. Mm -hmm. And the big baby blues. Yeah, yes. and the baby, yeah, and the, the big, sparkly baby the blues. big baby Very blues. Rita. So the the pen does not use Parker Quink. No, <laughs> Parker Quink is a decent um, workman workman like ink, but there's better ones out there. Yeah, it's not bad if that's all you got. Quink isn't bad, but well, the one I had with me a few weeks ago was a Pilot ink. Um, I'm definitely leaning into a lot more of the Japanese inks mm -hmm. yeah. because I like the colors. You would read it. And um, the uh, watercolors that I like best are also Japanese because they're highly pigmented. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I just like the color. Yeah, <laughs> Rita, Rita likes she's got uh, she's got a series of glass dip pens, yeah, so she can get the really funky inks that will jam, mm -hmm. like you know, oh, yeah, you, you don't want to put the anything that has a sparkle or a shimmer that should not go in a good no. fountain pen. And I'll, I'll grab an ink bottle off of the shelf and say, like, I'd stop to fill my fountain pens, it's like stop and look, yeah, yeah. And that's the reason that I don't use fountain pens as an aviator. <laughs> I love fountain pens. You don't use fountain pens because air pressure turns them into a jet. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Things you probably shouldn't do on an airplane. Yeah. Well, I've done most of them. <laughs> Parker 51 with Waterman Seafoam Blue. Waterman's better ink than Quink. Yeah. Quite honestly, I mean... Hiroshizuku, Hiroshizuku is what I had. The uh, what was it? Crimson Morning Glory was mm -hmm. what I had with me. That's that lovely pinky purple. I was yeah. dumb enough to so, give Rita a bottle of Irish, Irish, Hiroshizuku. the yeah. Japanese pilot, <laughs> yeah. and she went, Ooh, and I went, Shit. <laughs> well, there goes my wallet. <laughs> Speaking of that part of the world, oh, yeah, oh. South Korea is up in the air in more ways than one right now. E. The uh, prime minister and most of the cabinet of uh, Yoon's uh, party, the current sitting government, quit yesterday because they lost the election on Tuesday. And Yoon is the one that... Uh, Turned South Korea around to the point they were actually starting to work with the Japanese. Which is, that's kind of a minor miracle. Yes. Considering how many years that I was over there and fought to work with both countries at the same time and was never able to make it work. There, there are long-standing historical reasons for that. Yes. And that's also the reason Harry Harris was made... Uh, instead of the the ambassador to Australia, the ambassador to South Korea, much to his dismay. Oh. But that's going to impact a number of things, including dealing with China, uh, dealing with North Korea, because <clears throat> without a functional prime minister and functional cabinet, North Korea is going to be doing poke, 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 poke. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Other words, it's a day in again. Why? Yeah, and they may not like the reaction they get. Good. We may not like the reaction they get because we may end up getting drug into that shit. So, uh, if uh, if you follow world politics, you might want to keep an eye on that shit. In other news. Um, the prime suspect in the Nicole Kidman or Nicole Simpson murders has uh, met his final judgment. Yeah. And there's a whole new shade of dark. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't going to say that, Jonna. Crispy critter. 
Why do you want to say that? Did they actually crispy critter him? No, he's in hell. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, OJ is gone. Yep. Yeah. OJ the meme Simpson. I saw was a picture of the original chase with the one white car and a yeah. black cars. And if they don't do, run the funeral procession like this, they'll be missing an opportunity. Oh, <laughs> ow. <laughs> ow. <laughs> Ooh. Raptor, it's not so much the. Uh, what the Norks are using per se, it's uh, what you're not seeing that they're using. The I'll juice has that. been squeezed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it finally gets his gloves back. Now, he did it. We all know he did yeah. it. He, pra he practically de facto admitted to doing it and published the admission. Yeah. So to hell with him. Yeah. Um, I was going to, oh, <laughs> um, friend of ours, Rick Randall, yeah, who's, uh, bipped around parts of the world, um, mil uh, retired military posted a, uh, a meme today that I, oh, I yes. grabbed and ran with. And it's the, the, the blonde woman yelling at the cat and the cat's wearing a maroon beret. And the uh, the um, <laughs> the writing, the woman's yellow. The woman, it's uh, Air, uh, Air Force crew chief telling uh, Army, um, giving Army orders. And the cat, it's airborne, wondering why the stewardess is yelling at them. Yeah. Um, and I, so I just replied, "What's what's the, the Air Force gonna do? Tell them to get off the plane." Yeah. And. Uh, <laughs> That went around the internet with a quickness. Yeah, it do. You know, she always say good things about the dead. Well, good thing he's dead. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, that was bad, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Air Force. Uh, what have the wing nuts done this time? Oh, the Space Force. Oh, the Ranger? Yeah. Mm. So, Are they seriously calling them guardians? Yes. Yes. Oh, Lord. Bearing in mind, I believe, <laughs> I could be wrong, I'm sure somebody will correct me, didn't the Coast Guard go with guardians for a while until the Coast Guard made them stop? Yeah. Okay. They, they actually been are coasties. guardians. They're, they've always been coasties, as far yeah. as I know. And somebody made the official pronouncement that thou art guardians. Yeah. And Coast went, Coast Guard went, what? Anyway, uh, now the Space Force is... Getting into the medals and uh, tabs game, just like the Air Force. Yeah. So yeah. they now have their first Ranger qualified Space Force. Not guy. only Ranger qualified, but Sapper qualified. Yeah. Now, I have two minds of this. Both, uh, of, them are, both of them are pissed off, by the way, in case you ask. <laughs> um, the Ranger tab, yes, it's a leadership course. It is. Uh, when it gets down to brass tacks, Ranger course is a leadership course. Is his name Lightyear? <laughs> yeah, right. It's a leadership course. However, that being said, um, there is no reason for the Space Force to need combat leaders. No. Not until the Daleks show up. Yeah. But it's it's chasing the tabs for promotion. Yeah, I know. Just like they chase medals for promotion. It's just, it's... <laughs> It's I, I, that's that slot at Ranger School that he occupied could have been used by somebody else. That yeah, needed, that was that, actually going to use the Ranger it, qualification. That needed yeah. it. There's a look. There are a limited number of slots at Ranger School, guys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! I'm going to ding on our old buddy Jim Curtis for a bit. What's with your uh, destroyer captains and their small small arms expertise? Oh, fuck. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, um, there is a picture taken by the Navy yeah. and officially published in a Navy publication with the commanding officer of the what? It was a destroyer. I don't remember. It's one of the destroyers that has been involved in bumper cars in the Pacific recently. And um, I'm looking at it and he's firing. Okay. There are many things wrong with this picture. Yeah. Um, some of which are trainable, some of which are not. But I'm looking at it, and the first thing you notice, he's chicken-winged, yeah. which we haven't done since the 90s. Yeah. Um, 
And he had the vertical foregrip so far back. He could have just used a freaking magazine. Mag mag but then, huh, my beloved V-Cog, the Trigicon V-Cog, which I know rather well because I like V-Cogs. Um, the V-Cog has a uh, battery compartment for AA battery. Yeah. And it is under, I'm going to get off to Navy speak here, the outboard end of the scope, the scope away from the eye. Yeah, and I, I'm I'm looking at this and I'm going that what the fuck's wrong with that VCOG? And I realized that the battery compartment is right under his eye. Yeah. So he had it under backwards. Yeah. And second, I noticed that he had a very nice uh, Wilderness Outfitters pop up scope guard lens yeah. guard. You hit the orange buttons, it pops up. Only nothing was popped. Yeah. It was a posed picture. But even better, uh, the back channel is that uh, there was somebody in the weapons department who was pissed off. You think? <laughs> who was getting ready to get out. And I'm not able to verify this. Who had had enough. So they literally set him up to fail. Well, my... Okay, I got this from back channels, and I don't know Navy lingo. I was smart. I went where I could walk out of trouble. <laughs> so what is a fire controlman? Fire controlman is one of the people that works in CIC. Okay. So what I'm hearing, and this is a quote that I do not understand, is that there is no gunner's mate. There was no gunner's mate, whatever the hell that is. So a fire controlman put it together for him. Well... The problem is that uh, there are a number of problems. With that statement. <laughs> That's just what I got up back channels. <clears throat> there are gunners mates on those ships, but there wasn't one available. And that that's that's what I was I've been told. Yeah, and that there's a naval investigation underway. Oh yeah, there is that because the individual who is bailing apparently. Uh, <clears throat> may or may not have gotten off the ship before that picture was taken. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this this is why you tend to, if you're a good CO, you tend to take care of your people. Yeah. Because there are ways to get even. Uh, without going into detail, I know one ship that... Uh, the Admiral relieved the skipper on the spot. Really? Because had the ship pulled away from the pier again, she would not have come back. Ooh, that's not good. Yeah. Uh, go back to the part where I joined the service where you could walk home if there was trouble. <laughs> you can walk home from a ship. It may be five miles down, but you can walk. <laughs> glub, glub, I'm a sub. Wait, what? Depending on which reef you hit, you can also walk on the surface of the water, apparently. <laughs> but not home. <laughs> well, you can walk around till somebody flies over and goes, what the, what the fuck? <laughs> which has happened. We do. Uh, I, I, I'm a big fan of the VCOG uh, 1x8. Yeah. Uh, if they weren't expensive as hell and back ordered by the U.S. military, I'd have one on my AR-10 right now. Uh, VCOG is a very good uh, low power variable optic. Fantastic uh, setup. I like Trigicon anyway. Uh, Carlton, they, uh, MAAs may or may not be weapons qualified as far as armor type stuff. Why would your master of arms not be arms qualified? How many of your cops are armor qualified? Oh, point. point. Never mind. Mm -hmm point yeah <laughs> much less how many would you trust well jim considering that that's the ar-10 you sent me yeah the vcog that's the one ar-10 that could actually use a vcog despite the fact i'm not a long-range marksman i'm not this guy um <laughs> i don't play out at thousand uh thousand plus meters i do uh, however play at 600 800 yeah and the uh the dialing your vcog up to eight Let's you uh, sign your initials to various things at 600 meters. Yeah. 
<laughs> AJ says, I wear 13 and a half, so with good enough balance, I could have, have, have given walking home a good try. Yeah. Uh, yeah, combat leaders beat uh, no leaders, which is what the Air Force yeah, has. Point. But, yeah, uh, they have managers, not leaders. Yeah. If I can afford to slap a VCOG on that AR, uh, I have a Daniel Defense AR-10 courtesy of uh, Jim Totten. And if I can slap a VCOG on it, I'd do that with a heartbeat. Well, I told you, I got one you can borrow. It ain't a VCOG. I know. I think, well, it's over at your house right now. Yeah. The rifle is. I think I've got, you sent me a U.S. optic scope. Uh, to put on there, which is way more scope than mm -hmm. I'm able to use. It's a 10 power fixed end. Way more scope I'm able to use. Yeah. Yeah, it's an SN9, which technically does not exist. <laughs> of course not. It's Jim Curtis. Of course it does exist. Uh, Greg, the, the number of actual leaders in the Air Force is considerably lower than most of the other services. Don't give me I, based on my experience with dealing with the Air Force. I don't, other than getting off of their not perfectly serviceable planes, I don't know anything much about the Air Force. <coughs> that and I got a shit ton of them about 20 miles away. Yeah. Yeah. Go do the work thing, Jim. Have fun. Jay, later. Be uh, safe, Bubba. Yeah. LeMay was actually a leader. Yeah. He, uh, he led by example. The, uh, <laughs> Yes, differ definitely review renew your uh, CCL. Where are you living now, differ? They're out, they're still in New Mexico. Yeah, they're still oh. in New Mexico. Yeah, I don't know about weapons laws in other lesser states. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I guess everybody's heard about Sheila Jackson Lee's description of the moon. There's a big bowl of gas. Yeah. Big bowl of gases. <laughs> what blows my mind is some folks in Houston keep putting that silly bimbo back in office. Yeah, because she runs money to the uh, <clears throat> local hood rats pretty well. Yeah. And the ones that she doesn't have on the payroll, she just slips the money out the door, I think. And apparently, allegedly, I don't know this for certain, allegedly she's got a degree from Yale. Obviously not in science. We have already determined that degrees from the Ivy League are <laughs> questionable at best. Yes. Cedar was being very polite on yeah. that one. I was trying to come up with an appropriately zingy thing that wasn't like bought and paid for or because really <laughs> technically all degrees are bought and paid for. Just yeah. Some of us put a lot more work into <laughs> getting the degree. Yes. Oh, Kermit. Sheila Jackson Lee and Hank Johnson have a love child named Bill Nye. Ooh. <laughs> ow. 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 Oh, ow. Oh, we have a friend named Rob Hampson. Uh, Robert Hampson? Yeah. Doc. Doc Hampson. I had too many Roberts. So I had to go back through my mental Rolodex to make sure I was the right one. Uh, known variously as speaker to lab animals. Uh, he is honest to God scientist. Yeah. And on his Facebook page, he has forbidden any links to uh, um, Bill Nye, I Love Science, or uh, Was Nuts from uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah. Thank you, Jonna. I said Was Nuts and she came up with the name, so there you go. Because neither Bill Nye nor Neil deGrasse Tyson are scientists. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Nancy goes, I have a drama degree and I know the difference between the sun and the moon. Well, Nancy, sweetheart, that's because you got more than one neuron <laughs> between your ears. She's got one weeping all alone, the bitter darkness behind her eyes. And they put her at some time in the past when the Democrats were in charge on the science panel, science committee in Congress. Because they're congressmen. Yeah. Most rest of them don't know any more about science than she does. Yeah, good point, Dan. Three neurons. <laughs> None of which are connected. Yeah. None of which are talking to each other. 
Nope. None of which will recognize one another in the market. Yeah, one's infected, one's infarcted, and the third one's inhibitory. <laughs> <laughs> and Woo! our medical professional has been heard from. Kelly is off and running. Did uh, we did uh, say you know, the plug for Wombat Prime, right? Yes, Coming out we April nineteenth. Okay. Uh, we did mention Brian Mads, the uh, the starring. Yeah. Okay. Starring role. <laughs> April nineteenth. Anyway, she she is and continues to be an embarrassment. Oh God. Uh, she makes occasional cortex look good. And what was even worse was the video of her trying to put on the uh, eclipse glasses. What? She didn't know how to do it. Their glasses. She couldn't figure out whether to put them over or under her glasses. Yeah, so. What she should have done was just declare the sun racist and <laughs> look at it with her naked eyeballs. Yeah, she's not that dumb. Well, then she wouldn't be seeing any color. Yeah. Yeah, Jerry, I agree. Uh, briefings to Congress, critters and staff, you have to dumb it down for the poli sci major. And then they still don't get it. I I had to go up on the hill one time and one time only, and I was asked not to come back. <laughs> Lieutenant Jim Curtis as well, the father of Salty Jim that got registered yeah. in episode one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, That's boy. all right. Kelly's just getting even with me. <laughs> the writers, it's what we do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Help the, Ian lose more faith in humanity. I, not possible. I would like to know. If I offended Kelly with the raccoon picture I sent him, I realized it was salacious, but. <laughs> you sent Kelly a salacious raccoon picture? Yes, I did. Kelly? <laughs> Kelly, we. We ain't talk, son. <laughs> he says, I loved it. Oh, God. <laughs> we ain't talk. Cedar sent a salacious raccoon picture. Son, we ain't talk. Yeah. <laughs> I I found an artist at the con this last weekend. Most of her stuff is sweet and cute and fluffy, and then she has these raccoons with chocolate chip cookies that are just. I bought died laughing, and I bought several of them. You need to send one of those <laughs> to James Copley because he's writing a story that has. Hey. A number of different animals in it. Well, since James's wife went off at me for um, a selfie taken with James when James had come to visit Sanford and I, I think I will pass on oh. that. <laughs> okay, never mind. Wow. James is lovely. James's wife has insecurities. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Apparently, Kelly Grace is offense proof. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> 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 Salacious would be sexy. Kelly, you're in trouble because John had just said challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Um. Oh, and um for the people that come to Fool's Con, I have cat girl ears for some of them. Oh god. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> Last time was an accident. Yeah. This time will be on purpose. Okay. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Fine. Cat girl ears. <laughs> I tell you what, at that con, I, near as I can tell, we need to sell cat girl ears at the con. Because <laughs> a number of people, guys included, walking around with cat girl ears at the con was they stunning. Were, they were buying them at the con. That's where I bought them. Yeah, I know. We need to sell cat girl ears at cons. <laughs> it, 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 a lot of people do. I mean, oh, yes. okay. <laughs> yeah, Richard. Uh, he does have a comfort otter can in there. Yeah. What? A comfort otter? Is that like the comfort Alfrey. women? Yeah, it has comfort oh, otter can. Oh, yeah. dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, dear. Ears. <laughs> um, sell fox girl ears from your booth. Talk to ladies. They're the yeah. ones handling the uh, swag. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. What we learned with the booth was that if you have something that's really shiny and glittery, 
people are attracted to it. It draws them in like having this giant magnet. And then they look up and suddenly focus on the fact that there's books. Yeah. So that was an interesting little, we had a, we had a, a fishing lure. <laughs> yeah. Sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. <laughs> the, uh, what interested me about the con was um, for a gaming con, mm -hmm. this was surprisingly female dominated. I wasn't surprised. Um, there was a thing a few years back where it was like, oh, gamer girls are all fake. And a lot of girls were like, challenge accepted. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what I loved about this con was how many kids there were. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. They were just, I mean, literally children of all ages. Now, granted, the really little ones were being carried around by mom and dad. Yeah. They're usually vendors of some kind. But um, there were, I mean, well, I was scads of them. It was great. I was talking to the uh, Jumpmaster Press guys last night, and they said at cons, one of their best sellers is kids' books. Mm hmm I, I told you, I, I'm watching you the did. kids run around the yeah. gaming con, and I'm like, I'm going to go home. I actually started plotting it out while we were at the con. I am going to be writing a children's book that I'll, that I'll have next year available there, and I'm probably going to wind up with two. Um, the first one will be a, a science fiction um, picture book, and then the second one will probably be a fantasy picture book because I'll make my mom happy and finally write the ink tale, My Little Dragon um, yeah. I'll, I'll write his story for the first time. So, and Jesse yeah. goes, The fuck? Again, child of the late 80s, 90s, when Goss discovered tabletop gaming. Right. Uh, Mike, <laughs> uh, Mike is uh, glitter and firearms. Yeah. Um, one of these days, I shall tell you the story of my Ruger SP 101 357 Magnum revolver. And uh, you've told that a couple of times. Yeah, but not to Mike. <laughs> and uh, multiple pounds of stripper glitter <laughs> that wound up inside of it when I ran afoul of some bimbo with a bullwhip <laughs> in pounds, a porno studio. Pounds of glitter sounds like it would just be a fouling situation and you're gone anyway. Oh, oh, Gunsmith <laughs> Joe. It was inside the grip. It, Gunsmith, Joe, Gunsmith Joe sent me hate mail for days after that. <laughs> That's one way to get your boar punched. Somebody yeah. got punched. It wasn't me. <laughs> yes, the Santa Killer gun. It wound up. Yeah. I said it was kind of getting heavy on the uh, on the trigger pull, so I sent it to Gunsmith Joe for he does fantastic trigger jobs on Rugers, oh, and he opened up funny. and he sent back said, "Why the hell is this thing full of stripper glitter? Wait a minute, I don't want to know." <laughs> and he sent back about an hour later, "Yeah, I do." <laughs> And then he got squicked out because he took the front sight off, and apparently under the front sight was, and I quote, goo. Yeah. <laughs> well, you did have the one that went to uh, <clears throat> jail, and they found a interesting concealed weapon. Oh, God. Which one? The twenty-two. Um, That should not go clank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one of my officers goes... Yeah. <laughs> Sarge, Sarge, his nuts went clank. Grab that in me. <laughs> I was talking about the female. Oh, God. No, don't get me started. <laughs> nah, don't get it started. Don't get me. Mm. Yeah. That one was bad. Yeah. Woo, that one was bad. I laughed at that. At one my friend over in Arkansas, the sheriff, tell, was telling me about. They got a guy trying to break into the jail. Oh, yeah. I've had a couple of those. Yeah. He was in the process of climbing over the fence and got caught and fell and landed on the inside. <clears throat> on his butt and, quote, unquote, damaged the cell phone. Oh, darn. Yeah. And also ruptured the balloon with the cocaine in it oopsie yeah two whoops yeah so he had a double oops tied to call the woo woo bus yeah <laughs> we had a looked up the control room camera one time my sergeant and i looked up and saw a, uh, somebody climbing the uh container fence yeah at the jail say what the hell is that it would go out guys ca caught up at the top i give a good yank on a leg and he comes down minus several square yards of skin. 
Well, what the hell are you trying to do? Ah, I'm going to break into jail. My sergeant's like, get out. I said, oh, no, oh, no. He has succeeded in breaking into jail because yeah. he's publicly intoxicated. Yeah. She went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't come to jail. Yeah. Where was the where was the one down in, and it was in either Texas or New Mexico where the inmates were sneaking out of the minimum security to go get barbecue? Texas. Texas, yeah. yeah. That was Hood County, I think. Yeah. They uh sneaking out, going and buying barbecue. Buying barbecue for everybody in, in prison the uniforms. Sneaking back in. And sneaking back in and not getting caught. And the only way they finally got caught was an alert. Detention officer went, I smell barbecue. Yeah. Why do I smell barbecue? Yeah. And he started. He went to look because apparently he was a barbecue hound. Yeah. Went looking and found a whole bunch of uh, yeah. barbecue mustaches. Like what the hell? Yeah. And you didn't share. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, this wasn't an NAA mini. This was a Glock 19. Yeah. The female had an NAA mini. Yeah. Mm. No. No, she had a, a C Camp 32. Oh, you're right. She yep. had the C camp. Because um, the doctor started swearing about halfway through getting it out because it got hung up. Yeah. The yeah, one up in uh Tennessee was the one with the mini. Yeah. With the mini. Now the guy that why did that guy's nuts clank? Yeah. Get that <laughs> pig piled him. Uh, we removed a we uh pull started a uh, Glock nineteen out of yeah. his prison wallet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Please note in file. Please don't do that again. <laughs> yeah, we had barbecue for lunch uh, Tuesday. Yeah. Good barbecue, too. We took uh, Nancy and Ashley. Ashley? Nancy, Ashley, and Tom. Is it Ashley or Trisha? Ashley. Ashley. Ashley? Yeah. Everybody told me her name and I it just for some reason wasn't <laughs> right. Staying. Right. No, she's fine. Look at she picture her face, but yeah. funny name. funny lady. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah. Had Ashley and Tom and uh yeah, Ashley, yes. And Nancy. Yeah. And we got uh we got kudos for having Nancy on the show, so we can yeah. go kidnap her again. Yeah. Put her right there. Yeah. Watch our ratings go up. Yeah. yeah um, You're it, tired it of wasn't us. possible because of timing and everything, but John and I were hoping to do a, a yeah. an interview with her too. Oh yeah. Oh, we'll so Laris was sometime, her playing yeah. with the fox and having to watch you. <laughs> uh -huh. I didn't realize she was doing it until somebody pointed it out. It's like <laughs> she is. Yeah. But damned. Uh -huh. Little puppetry. Yeah. God, it was actually kind of adorable. I'm uh -huh. not going to do it, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Richard, I, I can believe that. Uh, <laughs> jail where the inmates use fishing line to get the pot delivery the family brought. Them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 100 year old jail with wide bars on the upper windows. Yeah. Well, the uh, exterior, the exterior, uh, Recreation yard at the down the old downtown yeah. jail uh, had chain link across top of it. Yeah, so they just lob it over. They just lob it over the yeah. and the land, and sooner or later it'd fall through. If it didn't fall through immediately, a pigeon would knock it through. Or... Yeah, <laughs> I'm surprised there haven't been more drone issues though. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that exterior recreation yards or recreation yards that are open to the sky are going to go away because of drones. Yeah. Drones and our helicopters. Yeah. Uh, drones these days, you can bring in good God, how much stuff? Four can pounds. You, yeah. On a on a drone, and you could launch the drone from a tree line a mile away. Yeah. And if it got spotted, you wouldn't get caught. Yeah. Well, they are working on that technology too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. My favorite is still the um, story from a Renaissance fair where someone was flying a drone oh, yeah. and someone on the ground threw a javelin spear. or spear at it and, and hit it and hit it and yeah. knocked it down. I mean, expensive for the drone operator, but awesome video. <laughs> <laughs> now, the fun part about leader is that they presented him with a, a scroll of, of 
like a, a tapestry scroll uh -huh. of, of you know, killing the drone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He actually chucked a, a spear at it. It was a Norse event. Mm -hmm. uh, it happened overseas, but they were just tired of that crap. So yeah. <laughs> just like, just like gorgeous, beautiful. Uh, Raptor, some of the uh, prisons in Mexico do have AAA on their towers. I'm pretty sure that um, everybody's seen the uh, electric BB minigun, right? Yeah. <laughs> because, quite frankly, the ACLU, the SBC, the Human Rights Watch, and a whole bunch of other jackasses would have a conniption with uh, jail and or prison guards discharging firearms, shotguns, anywhere near. Yeah. You know that they'd, they'd, they'd shit a solid gold kit. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure that um, a, one of those minigun BB guns yeah. would chew a drone up and wouldn't be nearly as, as uh, yeah. be a lot more defensible when SPLC and ACLU fi start filing their idiot lawsuits. Yeah. Well, there, there are actually now training drones, and I forget the name of the company, but they will bring them in. And you can shoot them. Oh. With a 12 gauge, whatever you want to use. Okay. Um, you can do it as training or you can do it as a competition. Oh. Yeah. Now, you don't want to use paintballs. You want to use something that's going to take, the, <laughs> take a blade off. Kermit says all you do is follow rotors. Yeah, but you got to follow them at extreme distance because they'll fly, they'll fly a hundred yards over the exercise field and drop their load. Yeah, they're not going to come in low. They're going to come in as high as possible. Yeah, they're so, literally target drones, Sean. Uh, Raptor, it may they may have started at Big Sandy, but they're now doing that. Uh, they're actually doing that full time. Uh, BB machine guns, they work. I, yeah, and you gotta have something that you can uh, chew up a drone at some distance with. So uh, the net launchers, the net launchers that, that bring down drones was a real good idea. Yeah, and then the little bug snipes just flow the drones higher than the net launcher range. Yeah, and still they still drop the uh, precision drop the dope. Yeah, or the cell phones. Actually, cell phones, um, cell phones are actually more yeah. uh, expensive in uh, jails and prisons than. Dope is yeah. If you can get a cell phone in into a prison, you can write you can write your own ticket. That's license to print money in jail. Yeah, yeah. Raptor the Marcus and his seal buddies telling the story about dry bags. Uh, that stuff's been around forever. Uh, the seals did it. Seer training did it. Everybody that's gone to field training has tried to do that in one form or another. Some people got away with it. Some didn't. Turning on the experience of the people doing it, what usually on yeah. whether they got away with it or not. Yeah. <clears throat> BBs are expensive these days. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, Kevin or Kermit. You can hide, you can hide dope and all manner of things. Well, Phones. Let's, let's not forget. Yeah. Here in Texas, pre drone days. Yeah. Somebody smuggled a cell phone into the Texas death row. Yeah. And a death row inmate was calling the uh, mate or the um, governor on his private cell phone. Yeah. Yeah. That was a big. Jim Anders still gets an eye twitch when you mention that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look at that, John. Yeah. <clears throat> Ag, the reason they don't is because the ACLU. Because that was an infringement on prison rights. Mm -hmm. One of the one of the problems with uh, jamming cell phones, yeah, is in most prisons, especially these days, where every phone uh, phone line in is voice over IP. Yeah, and if you have, say, an inmate get out of his solitary cell hop over to the electrical room and throw all the breakers, you no longer have a phone. Yep. So a lot of jails and prisons, the supervisors get to carry cell phones in case of emergency. You got jammers running. Jammers typically are battery powered or have a battery backup and aren't hardwired in. Yeah. 
you get the jammers running and you get one of those little bug snaps shuts down the phones. They you, you're dead. You're dead in the water. Uh, much like what happened out in California last month where they took down all the phones in a three block area yeah. and hit uh, Guardia for $30 million in cash. Liz, jammers do block cell phone signals, yes. Yes. Uh, that was one of the things that was used downrange quite a bit. Yeah, um, I am, I've got a major case of the hips regarding uh, the voice over IP uh, taking over for plain old telephone line. I dislike plain old POTS, plain old telephone service, yep. worked. It just worked. It wasn't great. It wasn't super high-speed, flashy, woo-woo Ferrari, it, it, but it always worked. The voice over IP, which lets them do all the fancy stuff. Yeah. Um, once the once the server goes down, you're toast. Well, the other thing too is Pots, the plain old tele telephone system, ran on wire. Mm -hmm. That's why you can't get it in most places because the wire's gone. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the other difference is, Pots was 64 K, 64 kilobit, so you had full voice range. Your cell phones. And voice over IP is only 8K. Wow. So there's no oversampling. Yeah. And it's a very narrow range of frequencies. Yeah, that makes sense. So an extremely high-pitched female voice mm -hmm. on a cell phone doesn't work. Just like an extremely low-pitched voice does not work. Yeah. It's outside the... Yeah, it's outside that 8K band. Kilobit, uh, Liz, is a 1,000 bits. Yeah. Yeah, cell phones are also simplex, and POTS is duplex. Well, <clears throat> POTS also had its own power supply. So if the power went down your house, your phone still worked. Yeah, I can attest to that. There was mm -hmm. times in yeah. um, New Hampshire when we had no power, but the uh, the phone, we had a landline at the farm for a long yeah. time. So well, as long as the worked. CO, the central office, mm -hmm. has power, mm -hmm. that POTS line will still have yep. power and still work. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is also back when I was a ham radio operator and had the base station at my house. So I was actually a part of the emergency network. Yeah. So if communications went down overall. I was one of the um, operators yeah. that would be handling any kind of communications at that point. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it ran on 18 volts. I don't know. I do know that um, if you pop over to commo section, if you're in the army and you pop over to commo section, don't ever hold wires for them. <laughs> <laughs> Not more than once. You. Commo section had me a couple of wires to hold and then crank the field phone. Yeah. That'll kink your car. Got your quickness. attention. Oh. <laughs> and then some. Well, the, the joke about the dog peeing on the ground. That's not a joke. That mm -hmm. actually happened. Mm -hmm. They had the dog chained up and his chain was over the phone wire. <laughs> and when it, and it was on a uh, party line. So they would crank it and the dog would moan mm -hmm. and they'd keep cranking and the dog would originally finally would have to piss and he would piss and make the connection and the phone would ring in the house. Uh, cell phones are a different story. They are. Uh, I don't like them. Huh? I don't like them. Yeah. <laughs> They're 800 megahertz by and large. The cell towers are limited to 240 simultaneous calls in most places. They are supposed to have 48 hours of power. However, many of the cell phone towers, not, not phones. The towers, not the phone. Yeah. However, many of those cell phone towers do not get checked for battery level routinely. And when you put a heavy load on them, which you would in case of an emergency, mm -hmm. they're going to run out of battery power faster, usually within 24 hours, if not less. Now, a little known fact is, <clears throat> even if you cannot get a call through, you have a much better chance of getting a text through. 
because it will sit and cycle until it will cycle and it's very low bandwidth requirement it's a small packet of information compared to so yeah and and with the proliferation of cell phones um there's not a lot of people that still do ham radio operations Mm. which used to be the backbone of emergency communications and now there's not a lot of people that i mean yeah it is it is a graying field for sure um i was trying to get my kid involved in ham because i thought it would be right up his alley yeah and i knew that once i got him going to the the ham radio club and and they saw that he was serious they would tuck him firmly under their wings and because they need people yeah and john's also right if they're if the cell tower is on battery power they will also limit the the length of your call Mm -hmm. yeah and that's (laughs) usually five minutes yeah sushi or liz hurricane was a nightmare oh you say the sweetest things (laughs) (laughs) yeah but I mean, I let my ham radio license lapse a long time ago. I've thought a few times about renewing it, but I don't have time. Yeah. To get back into the, everything I used to do. So my kid, one of his coworkers, is involved in Civil Air Patrol, and he was evidently telling the kid that I was in Civil Air Patrol, and then the two of them were trying to talk me into coming back on as a senior member. Yeah. No. I don't have time. Yeah. <laughs> Well, anybody that anybody that travels away from normal places, if you're smart, you have a, an Iridium phone. So mm. sat phone, sat yeah. phone. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and there's and there's some interesting backpacker GPS things now that um, are available. <laughs> a well, some of them are better than others, but the point that the guy I was listening to talk about it was that it's better than a regular cell phone because they're a dedicated unit for um, emergency location. Yeah, they're a dedicated unit, but the problem with them is the power burn, power draw on them, one. Mm-hmm. Two, it's assuming you have anybody monitoring. Hmm. Well, this is a, if you have been out there long enough that they've reported you missing, it's less power draw than a cell phone, and it's better than nothing. Yeah, that's a good point. He was was talking about the fact that the price has come down, and that if you're out there doing the Pacific Crest Trail. Yeah, but that also assumes that GPS stays up. This isn't an emergency. This is a lost hiker. Yeah. So So it's it's a different situation. Emergency is different. But um, lost hiker, someone out in the the boonies that you're trying to find them. Yeah, something. I looked at some of those back when we were doing some of the stuff. And basically what you want out there is an APERB. And that's not what those are. No. That's the problem. Right. And what they're doing is, you know, it's a sales pitch. No Mm -hmm. question. Yeah. They said, well, you know, we're going to give you this. And, oh, we're going to give you this, too, for only an additional $100. Uh, the guy I was listening to talking about it wasn't trying to sell anything. He was basically saying that if you're going out there in the wilderness, you need to have something more on you than a cell phone. Yeah. Which I agree with. Oh, yeah. Whether they're, whether or not. And he was saying that there are affordable options because if people hesitate to spend several hundred dollars on um, some of the more sophisticated ones, yeah. But an eighty-dollar locator, yeah. Somebody will at least take that. One. Well, you get what you pay for, right? As, as always. And if you're doing, and if you're getting seriously out in the boonies, then you probably do want to spend the money too. Yeah. Um, make Buy sure that E-perb. they can find you. Buy yeah. an eper. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Funny thing is, bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Goodness. Eperbs are actually. Monitored by the University of Alaska in Fairbanks. It doesn't surprise me. And even more interesting, uh, emergency response to EPIRBs worldwide is controlled by the Canadian Navy hmm. out of Halifax, Nova Scotia. Okay. Yeah. That's an interesting collaboration. Yep. Interesting. Yeah, I found that out from one of the guys that I worked with at ONR who went up to the University of Alaska, Fairbanks, to head up that program. 
and I had known that the research or rescue function was controlled out of Canada from some stuff I'd done up there. Mm-hmm. But it's just, you, there are connections you don't necessarily think about. No, no, that's not one I would have put together. Yeah. One of the cat's monitors or printer very, okay, I'm not going to ask why the cat is monitoring the printer. Because <laughs> the printer makes noises and it just puts Kelsey, out. Yeah. I, Kelsey, have a, I have a little cat companion oh, at my desk. Oh. So these guys Kitty might want to see that. So. So he has replaced toast. She, she They take turns. Huh. And sometimes because there's a cat bed over under the window on the other side of the desk, so yeah. sometimes I spend my day bracketed by cats. <laughs> but I thought the chat might like to see Depend a Cat has um, settled right in. Kitty Boo has apparently taken over. Yeah. Yes. Well, we we have come to the determination that Kitty Boo is just cute. Yeah. She's just flat cute all the time. She's She's got a very meek personality, except... <laughs> she's very much a mother because she will pin toast down who is twice her size with one paw yeah. and wash her vigorously even though <laughs> toast is not thrilled with this plan <laughs> and there's not a lot of squirming but toast definitely isn't happy and she'll just like lay there until yes mother yeah. until kitty boo's done <laughs> yes mother <laughs> yeah alan that i've i've heard that story somebody was flying in uh, microsoft flight simulator on his computer at home and hit the e on his Breitling watch, which costs like four grand. There's a but watch with an e on it? Yes. Yeah. Well, it's called Breitling. Doesn't surprise me. Wow. Very expensive watch. Yeah, you yeah. think? And they were not happy with him when they showed up. Oh, the location. <laughs> he got to pay. He should have to pay for that. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Kitty Boo used cute to get uh, off the streets. Yes. Yeah. If she hadn't been just adorable, Rita wouldn't have globbed up. Well. Yes. Rita probably would have globbed on her anyway. <laughs> oh, now that I think about it. Yeah, John, and maybe they do start at 10K. I looked at them years ago, so I don't know what they're up to these days. Yeah, I'm not interested. Out of my price range. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> Timex. Timex. But uh, no, she, Kitty Boo, after we got the kittens away from her, um, Rita would be pottering around in the yard. And Kitty Boo would come out and sit with her tail around her toes. And she and Rita would have long conversations that I'm sure both of them understood, but I was quite frankly confused. Um, have a good one, Ag. Take care. <laughs> but uh, and that's that's I think that's one of the reasons that Kitty Boo is, is uh, taken to domestication so well, mm-hmm. is she and Rita had conversations for hours <laughs> out in the yard. So. And, and she's funny because... Um, Toast vocalizes, I mean, she Toast has the full Siamese look. Yeah. Thank goodness, not the Siamese vocalizations. Yeah. So when Toast vocalizes, it's <coughs> small and tends to be more interrogative little chirps. Yeah. And Kitty Boo, on the other hand, that girl has the whole full-throated <laughs> torch singer. Yeah. And she'll talk to me in the morning if I'm not fast enough with Lucy Food. <laughs> And the other thing is she's got some little squishy balls that she plays with yeah. um, and she'll chase around the house and she'll talk to them while she's stalking them and bouncing <laughs> on them. And it's, Mouse it's, babies. It's like, I'll, I'll hear her and she'll be like, rawr, rawr. <laughs> and I'm like, Kindle, are you okay? And then I'll see she's got a ball. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Breitling base, base watch is now $16,500. Oof. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Greg, they... Uh, <laughs> I can believe that the Red Arrows, which is the RAF version of the Thunderbirds, Breitling gives every new member a watch. That's a hell of a PR move. Yeah. Well, not only that, it's pure advertising. You yeah. think about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it cost them, say it cost them $10,000. You know, the watch is marked up. But how many people do the Red Arrows see every year at air shows? How yeah, I many people want to be just like the Red Arrows? Ding, yes. So no, but it's Kitty Boo and Rita would they they'd have they I'd sit on the back porch with coffee and listen to them talk. Yeah. And it'd be a full on conversation. I have no idea what they were talking about. Probably don't want to know. But they'd have uh, conversations for hours. 
just ready to be, what do you think of this? Well, okay, but should we plant this here? Oh, good point. Yeah. Kitty Boo, Kitty Boo is just very cute. She's adorable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kent Price says, had a cat that would make the rounds as a watchman at 22.30 and at 3.30 going room to room. Hero, hero. <laughs> Sounded like a lost ghost child. Oh, dear. Yeah. I'm glad we don't have that one. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that's where Rita got the habit when she wants to say no, but she doesn't want to say no. She goes, Mur. <laughs> I think she got it from Kitty Boo. Uh, yeah, and then Jonas, Jonas said Henry just yells. Uh, yeah. 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 If I hadn't seen I've seen Henry as a uh, black and white blur once. Yeah, I did. Yeah, same. same here. Yeah. I, I walked in, I walked into their house <laughs> and Henry came stomping because that is not a graceful cat. No. Henry came stomping around the corner, saw me and lost. His single neuron. Um, holy shit. It's apparently my fangs were showing or the tentacles are out or something because he jumped straight up, pivoted midair, and took off a Jado bottle under his fuzzy butt. He went behind the stove when he saw <laughs> yeah, me. He was, he was hiding behind the stove, which yeah. is so cute. You know, Henry's also 19, so I think some senility is setting in because <laughs> some? he walks in some, he like walks in and like turns the corner and ends up against the wall and goes, <laughs> and, like, the wall is not going to get out of the way. It's just not. But he also gets lost, I think. He gets something but and he gets very annoyed at us and yells at us. He's a geezer. Yeah. He's a geezer. He's a geezer. got the he, the grouchy gene has engaged. It has indeed. So, he's quite the adventure. So, and on the, that, and that he, note, folks, oh, go ahead. We've wasted another hour of your time. <laughs> what do we have? Oh, I was going to talk about the cats at the booth at Falls Con, but that's oh, we can yeah. have that conversation another time. Yeah, we can say that. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Y'all have a good weekend. Remember, don't sweat the petty stuff. Don't pet the sweaty stuff. Don't forget Wombat Prime coming out for Kelly Grayson April 19th. Yep. And we will see you later. Have Be a good safe, weekend. Guys. Be safe, guys. <laughs> Bye.